fake reports have them connected to Carmelo and Jimmy Butler. Max Kellerman, who should the Celtics trade for? Are you going Mello, uh, Mello or Jimmy Buckets? The, the answer is actually Carmelo Anthony, because these things don't take place in a vacuum. It depends on, it depends on what you have to give up to get them. Jimmy Butler's a better fit for the team. He's a two-way player. But you have to give up right now. The sticking point is not only the Nets pick, which could be easily be number one overall. It's not a uh, top three protected, uh, not lottery protected. So you could get the number one overall pick in the draft and Avery Bradley, and they're hung up on Crowder. You know, most people I've spoken to about this feel like the Knicks would be lucky to just get the pick. So if you don't have to give up <coughs> actual rotation pieces who are valuable, especially on the defensive end, to get Carmelo just for the pick, you can do it. It's a lot. Or you have to give up the pick plus assets that could weaken your team right now to get Butler. You might as well go get Carmelo. I agree with you that Carmelo is the guy to get it. But the reasons why are different than yours. I do believe that Melo is a better fit for the Boston Celtics. I do believe as a talent, he's a better fit. I love Jimmy Butler. He can put up points, but not the way Melo can do it in terms of his law his, you know, his perimeter accuracy. Uh, you know, he definitely plays better defense than than Mello. There's no question about that. But I think if you're Brad Stevens, uh, you've got requisite parts that can be on the floor defensively. And I think the the impediment to Boston's success is that other than that five nine miniature dynamo and Isaiah Thomas, who is one of the league leading candidates for league MVP honors, uh, you don't have a guy that you can give the ball to when it counts in crunch time and say, take me there, close this deal. Not only that, if you're the New York Knicks, uh, Crowder, I like Crowder. I like Crowder a lot. Me too. Um, and I think that he's a piece that you want on your team. I like Avery Bradley a lot, too. Max, both of them are 26 years old. Yep. If I'm the New York Knicks, I don't hesitate. But I also know that I'm not empowered because it's something that Melo has to approve because he has that no trade clause. And that's what it comes down to. In other words, Carmelo doesn't want to go to a place that's weakened by the trade for right. him. Which is what happened hey, I, with them. I was told. I was told, Max, that he would want, if there was a way possible, he would want the team to remain intact, like a crowd is staying there, That's for why example. I love the he idea. He doesn't want to leave. That's yeah. why I love the idea of the Knicks-Celtics making a trade. Of course, also the Celtics don't want to be haunted by players coming back and playing them and all those things. Neither do the Knicks. Tough to trade within the division. But if the Knicks could get that Nets pick for Carmelo, just the Nets pick, that's a haul. That might be the best overall pick in the draft. Yeah, I mean, you ain't getting no number, no potentially number one overall pick for Carmelo. Right, but no, you but are Danny Ainge is not going to give that up. You are getting it for Butler, and you're getting Avery Bradley for Butler, and you might even get Crowder. That's the sticking point. So what I'm saying is, if the Celtics are serious about getting that other shot creator to get on the floor with Isaiah Thomas, lift some of the burden from him. Yes, Jimmy Butler can get his own shot, but if he's going to cost you defensive guys who you need with Isaiah Thomas in addition, you know, you're weakening yourself defensively and the pick, forget that. No. I would consider trading that pick to the Knicks for Carmelo. You keep your team intact. No urgency for Boston to do anything because they're not expected to win this year no matter who they get. You keep that pick, particularly when it could be number one overall. And this just came in. We got some trades, fellas, according to our Mark Stein. Andrew Bogut and Justin Anderson in a conditional first-round pick will be traded from Dallas to Philadelphia for Nerland's Noel. Ooh. Talk about Andrew Bogut. Do you not feel bad for him in the finals with Golden State two years ago? Then in the finals, they win the championship two years ago. They go to game seven last year. He gets injured in game six. Now he goes from that to Dallas to now Philadelphia. I mean, damn. Right. We, gotta go. we gotta go. We gotta go. We got your to. final take. You guys brought up Boston. The Patriots are fresh off another Super Bowl title, but Max has a strong message for the reigning champ. By Best Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Dear citizens of New England, I am here on behalf of a beleaguered sports nation with a message for you. No one anywhere in this country feels any sympathy whatsoever for you and your teams. There are sympathetic characters, and then there are all of you. Want to know why? Every single one of your major sports franchises has won a championship in the last 10 years, yet somehow you still play the persecution card. Just this week, five-time champion Patriots owner Robert Kraft said publicly that he doesn't hold grudges, but he'll remember the injustice of Deflategate. So let's review the case that he and his team and all you fans are victims in all this. First, your best ever quarterback did or did not cheat on the way to your fourth Super Bowl title. Next, 
There was an investigation during which said incredible quarterback destroyed evidence. Then the league commissioner suspended the quarterback. The quarterback fought the suspension and lost. The commissioner did indeed have the power vested in him in part by owners like Robert Kraft and also by the players union. So the 39 year old quarterback sat the first four games of the season. The team went three and one and the backup quarterback increased his potential trade value to first round pick level. The rested, healthy star quarterback returned and basically ran the table, giving a fifth chip to Mr. Kraft and all of stubbornly self-pitying New England. But Robert Kraft, a bazillionaire champion, otherwise immune to criticism, will remember how awful the whole deflate gate thing was. Please. Hey, New England, living well is the best revenge. Whining after everything, and I mean everything, goes your way all the time. There's a reason everyone hates you guys. It's not that your teams are so good. It's that you handle it all so badly. Get over yourselves, please. Sincerely, everyone else. Max, where are you from? New oh, York City. Oh, New York City. No, well said. <laughs> good question, that, Molly. That was fantastic, as always. We will see you guys all tomorrow. And, of course, for more final takes, you head to our Facebook and Twitter pages. Have a great day. So, um, I think we can both learn from one another. Uh, I think our games complement one another. And uh, being together, I think it's going to make both of our jobs easier. So uh, I'm excited for the opportunity. Uh, I think we can, we can wreak havoc on this league. Um, will it happen overnight? Probably not. But, you know, I, the potential is scary. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm excited for this opportunity. That was DeMarcus Cousins saying that he and Anthony Davis will wreak havoc on the NBA, and that havoc begins tonight against the Rockets. Both Cousins and Davis are averaging 27 points over 10 rebounds and over 10 rebounds per game this season. So we're wondering, Max Kellerman, yes. who should be the Batman on the court for the Pelicans? Ready for this, Molly? Ready for this for Stephen A? You ready oh, for this? No. On the court, Batman should be Boogie Cousins. Really? Oh, Lord. Anthony oh, Lord. Davis is a better player than Boogie Cousins. I'm not talking about... No, don't about, qualify it. I'm don't not, qualify I'm it. Not, say what you got to say. I am not say what talking you gotta say. about the locker room. I'm just talking about on the court, on the floor. You want hold to work on, inside on, out? Hold yeah. on, Max. Max, let me get relaxed for this. Hold on. Let me let me kick my feet up here. You go ahead. Let, let me kick my feet up here for this one. I, 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 let me get my, my blueberry muffin. My Go ahead, Max. Take take your time, Max. I can't believe this. I just I want to hear this. Who's the take, more take as much time okay, as you look, need. Look, who's take as much time as you need. Go who's ahead. Who's the more effective inside player, Stephen A.? Boogie or Anthony Davis? Inside, who's more effective? Don't ask me no questions. Just, just go ahead and speak. You know just the go answer. Ahead and you might want to move into the frame. There you go. The, <laughs> there you you know. know the answer is Boogie Cousins. He's the more effective inside player. Now, here's the other strange thing. Anthony Davis famously, he was celebrated for being a point guard who grew a foot suddenly, and now all of a sudden he's a four or five. He's a big. So he should have point guard skills in passing, and he can pass the ball. But who's the better passer? Actually, Boogie Cousins, who is a brilliant and underrated passer for a big. So you have a guy who's more effective on the inside and the better passer. Let Anthony Davis face up and play off the attention that Boogie is going to get down low. What does that mean? Anthony Davis still be the better player. Anthony Davis may even score more. But the offense, the, and I'm not even talking about the defense. On the defensive end, let Boogie crash the boards. Anthony Davis protect the rim and all those things. On the offensive side, the attention has to go to Boogie down low that's how this offense will work best the locker room everything else is a different story but let anthony davis face up and play off the attention boogie cousins batman is going to get down low you finished i am for now matt skeleton so let me get this straight you just finished sitting here saying that boogie cousins may not very well be the best player Correct. did you say that yep did you say that mm -hmm. You said he may not be the best player. You also said he may not be the best leader. Right? Did That's you say for that? sure. Did, did, did you say that? Yes. He's not gonna be the Maybe best the leader. leader. He's not gonna be the best. He's not gonna be the best leader. He's not gonna be the best player. But he needs to be Batman. What what is wrong with you, Max? Only you, I give it to you. Only you can say this stuff. It's unbelievable that you would come to this conclusion. It's hilarious. Boogie Cousins, who is a stud, he's the best big man in basketball. Oh. Don't get me wrong. But Anthony Davis is on another level, bro. When you talk about is Boogie Cousins. Is he a Cousins, big two? You just said Boogie's the best big man, but Anthony Davis is on another level. Is
was no, 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 no. I don't I don't consider Anthony Davis oh, just not? a big man. Why not? I consider him all I consider him oh. all world. I consider him all Boogie's, world. Boogie's down let me I let you talk. Did I did I interrupt you? Yes, I thought I thought let you, you go. Let now, here's the deal. Here's the deal, Max. I'm saying to you, Boogie Cousins is the best big man meaning a center. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, Anthony Davis in two years, maybe less, will be the best player in the world. This dude, 6'10", 6'11", back to the basket, facing the basket, three-point mid-range, drive to the lane, does everything. Defensive end of the floor, he's a shot blocker as well. By the way, when he went in the playoffs, someplace Boogie Cousins has never been, by the way, never been. When Anthony Davis was last seen in the playoffs, the season before last, you know that year that Golden State actually won the championship? What did Anthony, what, what did Anthony Davis average? 31 and a half and 11 rebounds, okay, on 54% shooting when there was no one else on the floor with him against Golden State. This is Anthony Davis. He played Davis him past that the Spurs about. to get him in this the playoffs, and the Spurs were fighting for, for home court. Fair so, enough. yeah, Anthony yeah, yeah, Davis is the man, I, of course. I'm just saying to you, he's all world, yeah. but you want him to be Robin. Well, really? Just, wait, really? Not exactly Robin. What? He I, Robin times me as one of the 10. other. Hold it, hold it. There can't be two Batmans. Well, it's no, Batman that's right. and Robin. Batman's that's what it is. Batman's got to be Boogie. What? You've watched enough. you watched enough Marvel comics and all of that stuff. Don't act <laughs> like you don't know. There can only be one Batman, he and there can it. only be one Robin. Right. You don't get to sit there and say Batman and part and, 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 and saw him in a half. Who says and Batman has to them? team up with Robin? Maybe he's teamed up with Aquaman. How do you know? The point is I, that the Aquaman, offense on the Aquaman off is water and oil. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it is. It's underwater. Come on. On the offensive side of the ball, the offense has got to run strategically through Boogie down low. Boogie can shoot from the outside, too. But from Boogie down low, he's the more effective inside player. He's the better passer. Let Anthony Davis feed off of that. He also leads the league in technical fouls. Sure. That's your leader? No. Really? No, that's who you're running the offense through. That's he's Batman, Batman in that's that That's Batman sense. for you. Yeah. Batman who might get ejected the very next day. The second he gets a technical foul, he's ejected. That's your Batman? Batman plays. Really? He's a vigilante. He plays by his own rules. Oh, nice, man. gosh. And let's, not bring, and let's not bring up Aquaman in, in New Orleans. We know we have to be incredibly sensitive yeah, to that. Yeah, right, of course. The, right, right, right. The, the, absolutely. I meant but the sea point level. Is, it's below yeah. I, yeah, you know, I, know, I know what you meant, course, but I'm just saying, course, you, know how, you know how people yeah. can run away with stuff, so we sure. make sure that. Bottom line is this. Boogie Cousins is no joke. But even being no joke, even being the best big man in basketball, he is no Anthony Davis. I, I can promise you that. That is that, that is it is nonsense. No, Anthony Davis is the better player, but the listen, in the on the dream team, the original dream team, did they run the offense through Michael Jordan, the greatest player who ever lived? Actually, Charles Barkley used to lead that team in scoring. Charles Barkley was kind of Batman they were on that team. against Angola. Will you stop it? <laughs> By the way, the hopes of New Orleans is that these two guys can turn the rest of the league into some lesser version of basketball teams. These twin towers can be used as any effective twin tower pair is used, not with both down low. There's not enough room. Someone's got to play outside facing up. That's going to be Anthony Davis, and the attention should go down low through Boogie, making him the Batman of the offense. Okay. Let's leave it there. Who should be the Batman for the Boston Celtics? Jimmy Buckets or Carmelo? I might be spreading rumors right now. Which superstar would look best in Boston's green and white? Find out that next. And also find out why Jay Culler's next stop might not be on any team in the NFL. Q, Stephen A, please. Reports have them connected to Carmelo and Jimmy Butler. Max Kellerman, who should the Celtics trade for? Are you going Mello, uh, Mello or Jimmy Buckets? The, the answer is actually Carmelo Anthony because these things don't take place in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. it, depends on, it depends on what you have to give up to get them. Jimmy Butler is a better fit for the team. He's a two-way player. But you have to give up right now. The sticking point is not only the Nets pick, which could be easily be number one overall. It's not a uh, top three protected, uh, not lottery protected. So you could get the number one overall pick in the draft and Avery Bradley, and they're hung up on Crowder. You know, most people I've spoken to about this feel like the Knicks would be lucky to just get the pick. So if you don't have to give up <coughs> actual rotation pieces who are valuable, especially on the defensive end, to get Carmelo just for the pick, you can do it. It's a lot. Or you have to give up the pick plus assets that could weaken your team right now to get Butler. You might as well go get Carmelo.
I agree with you that Carmelo is the guy to get it, but the reasons why are different than yours. I do believe that Melo is a better fit for the Boston Celtics. I do believe as a talent, he's a better fit. I love Jimmy Butler. He can put up points, but not the way Melo can do it in terms of his law, his, you know, his perimeter accuracy. Uh, you know, he definitely plays better defense than than Melo. There's no question about that. But I think if you're Brad Stevens, uh, you've got requisite parts that can be on the floor defensively. And I think the the impediment to Boston's success is that other than that five nine miniature dynamo and Isaiah Thomas, who is one of the league leading candidates for league MVP honors, uh, you don't have a guy that you can give the ball to when it counts in crunch time and say, take me there, close this deal. Not only that, if you're the New York Knicks, uh, Crowder, I like Crowder. I like Crowder a lot. Me too. Um, and I think that he's a piece that you want on your team. I like Avery Bradley a lot, too. Max, both of them are 26 years old. Yep. If I'm the New York Knicks, I don't hesitate, but I also know that I'm not empowered because it's something that Melo has to approve because he has that no-trade clause, and that's what it comes down to. In other words, Carmelo doesn't want to go to a place that's weakened by the trade for right. him, which is what happened hey, I, with them. I was told... I was told, Max, that he would want, if there was a way possible, he would want the team to remain intact, like a crowd is staying there, That's for why example. I love the he idea. He doesn't want to leave. That's yeah. why I love the idea of the Knicks-Celtics making a trade. Of course, also the Celtics don't want to be haunted by players coming back and playing them and all those things. Neither do the Knicks. Tough to trade within the division. But if the Knicks could get that Nets pick for Carmelo, just the Nets pick, that's a haul. That might be the best overall pick in the draft. Yeah, I mean, you ain't getting no to, number, no potentially number one overall pick for Carmelo. Right, but no, you but are Danny getting Ainge is for, not going to give that you up. You are getting it for Butler, and you're getting Avery Bradley for Butler, and you might even get Crowder. That's the sticking point. So what I'm saying is, if the Celtics are serious about getting that other shot creator to get on the floor with Isaiah Thomas, lift some of the burden from him. Yes, Jimmy Butler can get his own shot, but if he's going to cost you defensive guys who you need with Isaiah Thomas in addition, you know, you're weakening yourself defensively and the pick. Forget that. No. I would consider trading that pick to the Knicks for Carmelo. You keep your team intact. No urgency for Boston to do anything because they're not expected to win this year no matter who they get. You keep that pick, particularly when it could be number one overall. And this just came in. We got some trades, fellas, according to our Mark Stein. Andrew Bogut and Justin Anderson in a conditional first-round pick will be traded from Dallas to Philadelphia for Nerland's Noel. Ooh. Talk about Andrew Bogut. Do you not feel bad for him? In the finals with Golden State two years ago, then in the finals, they win the championship two years ago. They go to game seven last year. He gets injured in game six. Now he goes from that to Dallas to now Philadelphia. I mean, damn. Right. He's we had some gotta bad go. luck. We got to go. We got your true. final take. You guys brought up Boston. The Patriots are fresh off another Super Bowl title, but Max has a strong message for the reigning champ. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here.